OK, let's continue with our last session for today. Related and in addition to Martin's last presentation on SQL Base, we would uh, like to introduce you to a new solution uh, for high availability recovery and migration of Windows and Linux servers, including SQL Base. Back to you, Helmut. Many thanks, Ines. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, Carbonite. And uh, this is a brand new product for, uh, at OpenText and um, very successful for now because uh, we can give you a tool on hand to replicate uh, databases uh, or hold servers or maybe to clone an existing server to a new one. That means um, sometimes you have to set up a new server in your environment, in your company, and uh, it takes normally some days to get it up and running. And with Carbonite, uh, the solution can be installed on uh, maybe an empty machine and computer and so on. And it starts to look into the existing environment and creates a brand new computer, new server with all the old settings. And after a while, you can stir up the old server, you can restart the new one and uh, the job is done. So it's for cloning a server, or maybe you want to upgrade a server with a special environment. That means uh, you need a new hardware, you need a new operating system, and so on. The second part of Carbonite is to uh, do um, recovery system, or to create a recovery system, which is pretty fast online again. So if you look into some technique um, and some background information, um, normally, recovery methods are working like you have a server and uh, you have a special storage medium. Like you start on a Sunday or on a Saturday with creating a full backup of your solution, of your environment, of your server. And every day, maybe after uh, 8 p.m., you start creating an incremental uh, upgrade again and store it again on a special storage medium. That means if something happens, then you have to create a new server and you have to start with maybe the, the tape or maybe the medium, storage medium uh, from Saturday. And then you have to start on um, creating new uh, incrementals, play in the incrementals, read the incrementals and bring the system back. And I'm pretty sure that takes days to get the application back and the data back and so on. So with this as our recovery, we do something totally different. So what we are doing, we have a real time continuous synchronization of different uh, target servers. That means we have a server, a, a source server. This is our running server, our really um, actual server and everyone is working on the server. And we have a target server. It can be a physical machine. It can also be inside the cloud. That means it can be a virtual machine. Maybe you have um, an existing um, computer inside your backend and server in your backend with different virtual machines. And you can use one of the virtual machines or you can set up a virtual machine for the disaster recovery. That means we have a real time continuous synchronization and this gives you following nice availabilities and efforts. At least um, you have to think about if you do something like a backup, I mentioned the backup before, you start on a Sunday or a Saturday and you do incremental backups. And if something happens, you have an outage, that means maybe the server is down, has a hardware problem and so on. It takes sometimes hours or days to get it back. That means you have to load all the disk, you have to write in uh, and back the information, you have to uh, recover the databases and so on. With this, uh, the discover uh, disaster recovery is a little bit different. So we want to have the outage time um, really close to really when the problem ex uh, um, raises up. That means, for example, an existing server has a problem, stops working. After maybe two or three minutes, the backup system is back and the people can still work. There is no a problem with the database as no loss of data. Of course, if there is an open transaction on the database, fine, then there is uh, at least a uh, missing data, but it's better to have a rollback on an existing database than missing days of data. 
And also it's um, really, if you talk about minutes or seconds, um, you need at least a really synchronized replication of your data. That means you have to install something and um, nice clever system to get all these uh, things done in the background. That means if something happens, maybe there must be an automated mechanism to say, okay, the server, the main server is down, please restart and start this um, yeah, backup server and bring back all this environment that the user can uh, immediately start working again. So this is really a small uh, time frame which really the server is down at not days or hours. It's only maybe a few seconds or a few minutes and then you are back live. So if you look into an, our environment, you will see we have diverse systems. We have Windows servers. Uh, if you look into the Linux environment, that means, for example, if you decide to go with um, ETX, then at least you have minimum one Linux server to um, yeah, give the possibility to work remotely with your applications, with your data, software as a service, for example, maybe you have Hyper-V, virtual machines, where you have physical uh, machines in your back end, maybe you are using VMware, virtual cloud and so on. So you can mix all these different um, platforms into one solution and to run these backups and um, maybe if you want to clone a computer, you can also use this uh, service or this tool to get this computer cloned with all the data, with all the settings and so on and it's back in a short time you can test it and after a while you can replace the old server. So a lot of possibilities inside Calvinite and we want to touch a few of them. Protect the data center means um, you can copy uh, and protect the data inside from one data center to another data center. Like you're running your server farm maybe in Munich and after a while you find out it makes sense and to have a crash recovery and a really smart intelligent intelligent solution. Uh, you have a, another maybe office in um, let's say Hamburg and then you have another data center and you can do a replication of these two data centers on the fly. That means if something ha uh, is uh, stored and changed on server one in Munich, it is immediately done also in Hamburg. And it works also for databases. Later on, I want to talk a little bit about databases because they are a little bit special and um, you have to think about um, some installation rules, but I'm pretty sure uh, the, um, the result is brilliant and you can use it inside your environment. And also, uh, it is used for cloud to cloud replication or setting up again new cloud environments like I did for Asia. Later on, you will see I'm using two servers. The first one, it was an existing server. It was running uh, since some months and I want to set up another server with the same settings. I need a new em environment and so on. And I want to test all the Carbonite settings. So what I did, I installed uh, the Carbonite uh, tools on the target server. I told the target server, here's my source, please do the replication. And after a few minutes, my uh, new cloud server was up and running with the same settings, with the same environment, with all the same um, installed tools and so on. And of course, you can do also a replication from any to any. That means physical to virtual. Uh, you have maybe a, a physical server in your environment. You are working with a, a physical server, it's an application server, maybe with a database in the background and so on. But for um, backup reasons, you want to set up another server, but you want to use it as a virtual server. So maybe you have an engine. On this engine, you install Hyper-V or VMware, you can, or Azure, for example, and then you can set up this environment and you can copy automatically, replicate all this information to your back end. And if something happens, maybe you have a problem, power problem with your uh, physical server, then immediately the virtual server can take over the uh, load and can work for the users. So we have a real time byte level asynchronous replication. So what you can do is you can protect the entire server. That means everything what is done on the server is also automatically done on the backend system. The backup system. 
So if you have a new user, then automatically the, the new user is also available on the backup system. If you type something in into a document, it's on the fly on the, uh, on the backend system. You can also decide, I want to just only the data. That means um, we have file system for users. Maybe we have a database running in a file system and so on. Then you can use uh, a nice browser tool to say this part of my server, this part of my user environment should be replicated to another server or to another backend system. Or applications. So I have a test environment. I'm running this test environment. Everything is fine. Now I want to go productive. Uh, so I can use uh, again Carbonite to publish this application with all the settings, with all the environment information. So this is pretty easy to do. And um, at least everything is automatically asynchronously replicated to your server. Also, what you can do is if you want to set up a new server, like you have an existing uh, 2016 server from Microsoft, and you want to use a newer server, you bought a newer server with uh, operating system 2019, then you can use um, Carbonite to set up all the applications, the data, and you can test uh, after a while, you can test this application, you can test the databases and so on. And if it's fine, you can stop running the existing server and immediately the um, fail back system at this point, the replicates as a clone of the existing server will start running. So there are a lot of possibilities inside Carbonite for setting up to create clones, to uh, do migration of existing server, or to do backups. That means for the replication of servers. How does it work? That's a good question. So what we have at least, what we have to install is a replication console. Later on, I want to show it to you because I have Kavanaugh installed on my Azure environment. So you, we have N source systems. In this my case, only two. That means we have a source system and we have a target system at least, but you need only one console. And the administrator who's responsible for the backup system um, or maybe to clone uh, different servers and so on, can use this replication console to get the job done. So we have also an SDK, an API, to provide high configurable failover and failback options with pre and post failover scripting. What does it mean? If we have a problem with our maybe physical hot server, running server, active machine, then we have a failover. That means at this point, um, our Carbonite console knows there is a backup system and starts the backup system. The backup system gets the latest IP address from the source system, the computer name. Maybe it starts database engines and so on. So the user can log in again, can start his application and can run his application. Maybe it's not the same performance because maybe it is on a, a virtual machine, maybe it's somewhere in the cloud, but you can immediately start working with your existing application. And also a fail back option. So my old server um, is now up again, everything is fine. Then uh, the replication console sends all the data which was uh, changed during the downtime again back to the uh, source system and starts the source system again and stops the backup system. So it's really a failover failback option with pre and post failover scripting. If you look a little bit, a little bit into the technique, we will see and we have uh, about um, how it works and we have to talk about bytes and blocks. So most of you maybe have a hard drive. Some of you have at least um, SSD drives and so on, but the technique behind is nearly the same. So if you look into uh, a hard drive, for example, the hard drive is split into different blocks and inside the blocks you will find bytes. So a document inside a block um, has used some of the bytes and we have some unused bytes. So at least if you do an incremental backup, uh, if as in the past, like uh, doing something, we um, like uh, creating tapes, 
like what document was changed and so on. The whole document is overwritten and transferred uh, to the tape and maybe later back into the source system. With Carbonite, it's a little bit, bit uh, different. What we are doing is we only change the bytes which are really changed. So at least we added uh, maybe a few bytes inside a document, um, something was uh, edited and so on, so if something has changed, then we only change the bytes inside the document on the target system. That means also for databases that we only write directly into the DBS and into the log files. Whoa, can be very dangerous because at least if we have a running database engine on the target system, on our backup system, and uh, you will touch the database, you will connect to the database, then it is absolutely a disaster. So very important to know is if you do the replication, um, the target system should not have a running database engine. It's not only for SQL base, it's for all database engines. That's why we have a scripting, if we have a failover, that we start at this point the databases. So we write directly again into the DBS files or in any other file, if you look into Oracle, into directly into the blocks and so on. And in case of uh, we need this engine, if in case of failure, then we start the database engine. And then the database engine is up and running. So we don't need at least all this uh, transactions. We don't have to follow up transactions to replicate databases. And it's working very well. Server operating systems we support. So we support Linux. So if you are running SQL base, for example, on Linux, then you can also set up a Linux backup system and we do the replication for the database directly on Linux. And the same for Windows Server, of course. So if you have a running Windows Server and you need a backup system for Windows Server, then you can also use um, Carbonite to do all the jobs in the background. There are many types of servers, proxy server, application servers, and so on. So at this point, I highlighted a few uh, which are really common in business applications like application server, web server for IIS. If you run, for example, XWAP application or uh, TD mobile applications, um, you need a mail server if you want to send out emails. Of course, you have a database server like um, yeah, a running SQL base or a SQL server and other databases, you have print servers and so on. And some, of course, um, basic servers like DNS, communication servers, media servers, and, and, and. So there are a lot of different servers and mostly they are, are on one uh, target system uh, or source system. And at this point, we can take care about all of them. That means, again, we can set up really a straightforward what should be also replicated on to the uh, target system. So if you look again into our, um, uh, our environment uh, of Carbonite, what we do as the first step is if we set up a target system uh, and target server, we do a first a full replication. That means we are looking into our uh, resources, operating system, applications, and so on. And we have a replication service installed and also on the target machine. And we do a full copy of the server if wanted. If you want only uh, to copy, um, let's say, the database and uh, uh, the file system of the users, fine. But at least if you want to have a mirror, that means if you want to clone your machine, then you can also use Carbonite to create a one-to-one -one clone of your existing machine. Then to replicate a computer or a server, then we have to install the replication driver. It's a um, double tag driver, that means we are listening to the operating system, we are listening to the hard disk, what's going on on the hard disk, what should be replicated directly uh, into the target server. So at this point, user application writes something on the hard drive, like a 
we are changing a document, we are creating a document, we do something with a database and so on. So it's done into the replication driver and it says, sends this information to the replication service and the re replication service writes it also at the same time asynchronous to the hard drive. Asynchronous means if we have a problem in the transfer because maybe the store server it's in Munich and the um, target server maybe is overseas and we have uh, maybe some um, yeah, problems with uh, the transfers and so on. Everything is also stored locally first at all and transferred if the backend system, the target server is back again. So there is no loss of data. So if we have a latency period, we uh, store all this information on the, as a replication service and later on we send this information to the replication server. So it's also the write order is very important because we are changing bytes and that means also if you are out of sync, then would it mean that we have maybe um, overwritten the latest version of this document or of the database. So it's not a good idea. So at least it's done. So there's no disruption testing before failover failback. So at least um, you can directly, for example, uh, connect to the new server, start uh, the failover system, but you have to disconnect from your yeah, source server because if you start looking into your replication service, uh, if you are still working with your source server and you connect to a, or start the engine of the database on the target server, then maybe you get really in trouble. Here is the Carbonite console. It's pretty simple to understand. So it's not, uh, like install and um, set up the environment, set up the jobs, set up the different servers, um, make them make you familiar with these different uh, jobs and settings and so on. And after a while uh, it starts working. That means first at all it makes a copy maybe of your console services and then it uh, starts for example mirroring the machine and then it looks into the changes and also the transfer of the data is highly compressed. That means uh, if you have a, to transfer a 10 gig uh, of database is now at least um, transferred only maybe five megabytes and so on. So it's very quick and your uh, the backup is done very, very quickly. Here is a screenshot of the data for the replication. Like you can see, I want to have not all of these different directories uh, replicated. The yellow marker means um, the C drive. We look at the C drive, but not at the full C drive because we don't want to replicate the packages and recycle bin. But at least if you look into the Gupta section, we have also the databases. That means if something is changed inside the files, so that we have byte chains inside the files, then we send also the byte changes to the target system. So I have a small demo because if not, we want to run out of time. Uh, again, I'm using my ETX environment. I have my source server. My source server at least has some databases. You saw some screenshots. I have also the replication environment installed. That means at least I can also uh, start and look into the Carbonite um, replication engine. Uh, or console, the better word, uh, to look all of my settings, to look uh, the healthy of my replication tools and so on. So I bring it down and I look into my target system. So in my target system, I have, for example, a running service. And uh, this is the same console if you want to run, for example, um, a clone, if you want to migrate an existing server to a new server, or if you want to do the replication, that means to create recovery systems. So it's the same look and feel the same tool, only the license is a little bit different. Um, if you look into our environment, you will see we have some uh, double take availability, that means everything is fine, everything is healthy. Uh, we can look into the console, but if you want to create a new job, I can go into the job section, uh, protect. That means at this point, I don't have the possibility to do a migration because I don't have the license for that. Um, 
I don't have only the license to protect something. So I can open the protect environment. It takes a second because it has to look into the source server and then I can set up different replication rules. So at least I can look into my environment. I can say, OK, I need from the Windows Asia system additional information and so on. I can add this rule and at this point, if I add this rule, then the replication for this directory starts immediately and takes care if something was changed, is also changed on the server system, on the replication system. So that's something uh, inside the Carbonite environment. I close that one because I want to go back to the console. Come on. Here we go. So again, this is an evaluation um, a license. You could see activity is now idle, nothing happens, and so on. So there's nothing going on on my uh, source system. So I want to go back to my source system to make it a quick change. So I don't want to write something in the DBS file because then I have to start again the, the database server on the server side and so on. So what I want to do, I want to simulate something. Um, save it. And if I go back to my. Carbonite system, I go to into the same directory. Hopefully you can find it. Uh, it's open, still open. So the change is done. It's not, again, it's not the complete document was replaced, only we changed the bytes which are really changed inside the source system. So at this point, we can also use um, the database because we are writing into the file itself into the DBS file, into the log files. If you have a new log file, we transfer the whole log file and so on. So it's pretty safe. One point about licensing. Um, I mentioned for Carbonite, we have two different licenses. One license to uh, clone a machine, to migrate the machine to a new uh, operating system and so on. That means at this point um, you get maybe a, a 60 day or a 90 days license to get the job done for one server. And then you uh, the license stopped working, the, your target system should be up and running and so on. And the second license, uh, I showed it to you because I opened also um, this Carbonite console. Then you will see um, we have a job like we want to protect something. Protect means it's a different license. This license is doesn't expire at least because uh, this is used to replicate, to protect a running system. And also what you can do, you can set up all the scriptings, um, the pre the recoveries, um, for example. So if this uh, uh, protected server gets down and we want to use a replication server, then some scripts must run. That means at this point we start the SQL based engine. So it's a start of an executable DBN TSFR RV. At this, this point, the replication is complete and then you can use this um, backup service. One license about or one sentence about the uh, SQL based license. Um, it must be done. So it's not an active engine. If you want to run an active engine, you need additional SQL based licenses. So it's not an active license. Please don't start the database engine if you don't need the replication machine. It's only if you have really a disaster in your company. Then it makes sense that it automatically the recovery system starts and the database is back. The database engine is back. You can work on this uh, backup system and you don't have the failover time from hours or yeah, days. So this is a short overview about Carbonite. I'm pretty sure you can use it and you have some ideas and uh, maybe some ideas how to use it in your environment. Again, it's pretty easy to install and to ways to use it like a migration tool or as a protection tool. Many thanks. Any questions?
Okay, thank you, Helmut. Um, one more thing to add, you mentioned it briefly. <clears throat> so yeah, if you're interested in the solutions, Helmut just did show you, um, they are called carbonite availability and carbonite migrate. So yeah, talk to us if you're interested and we definitely uh, can show you more.